Hello, this is Guillem Godoy. I'm gonna continue a series of videos where I explain how to program with Android Studio. And in fact, this video builds upon a previous one where I showed how to develop an app uh, that lets user play the classical Sudoku game or at least a very simple version of it, okay? So in this former video, we already showed, uh, sorry. Yeah, we already showed how to, how to program, how to make a program that let the user play uh, in this grid here by uh, pressing on the empty cells in order to determine what symbol what symbol goes there and also uh, whenever the system detects an inconsistency there's a warning at the bottom letting us know that there's a repeated cell okay well uh, one of the ugly things of our former implementation was that the Sudoku was hard-coded. It was not even read from an input file, okay? And that's what we are gonna fix here, or in this video. Well, there are several ways to read from files and we're going to use a specific one here on the left side you see that we have a resources folder an option would be to read an input file from there but we are going to consider a different option that consists in creating first a folders file a folder uh, called assets uh, to that end, we go here to up and pressing the right button uh, of the mouse, we choose the new and uh, folder, and here we have the option of creating an assets folder. Okay, that's what I do. And after a while now we have these assets folder and now i can uh create inside it a file an arbitrary file in this case i'll call it sudoku sudoku.txt okay and i'm gonna fill it with uh these contents here Well, I'll try to arrange things properly. Okay, and that's it. Now, um, save. And now we need to, to read this file. Well, first of all, I'm gonna ignore this line here. And uh, in order to read this file, uh, we will need to get the assets, the assets folder and open, open this file, which is called uh, sudoku.txt. The open function uh, is uh, marked with a warning. That's because uh, this function is prone to throw uh, an exception. But if we uh, autocomplete, either with con alt enter uh, or option enter in a Mac, uh, yeah, it automatically wraps or codes the the call to the open function with a catch okay uh well in order to read this file 
I'm gonna use um for example a buffer buffer reader. Okay, but uh, what it gives us is an input an input stream reader. So yeah, our reader is going to be assigned uh, a new buffer reader, which uh, receives as, as a parameter an input stream reader. Okay. Well, we need to close everything. Okay. And once this is, once we have the reader, uh, we can read its lines in the following way. While we are able to read a new line, we will keep going. Uh, since this can produce a, a null, null value, it recommends us to, uh, well, to check whether what we, we read was null. And in fact, this is necessary in order to, to know when we have finished this process, okay? Well, this new line, uh, okay, it can be processed in several ways, but okay, in order to reuse what we did in the past, we will try to construct or, um, I mean, to fill the, the input, the input variable by concatenating the, the lines we, we are reading, okay? Okay, uh, recall that that was what actually with, uh, we did here, right? Because we were concatenating uh, all of these lines in order to form these strings. So we will try to do the same. So, uh, sorry, uh, I will initialize input as the empty string, and uh, I will uh, append is each new line read. But also, I'll add, I'll add uh, a white space after each line because, in fact, this is what we were doing here, okay? Good. Uh, yeah, this will add, yeah, a white space. In fact, we have not white spaces here. But maybe it could be a good decision. Observe that after this process, input has uh, the same as before, but in order to make sure, okay, the change I'm gonna do that now is not necessary, but uh, by doing this, we are telling uh, the split function to split uh, the input variable, not exactly by, by one space, but by one or more spaces, just in case there was uh, one uh, more than one space at the end of each line, okay? Or uh, if we had more spaces or more than one, uh, in this way we would get rid of it, or we would get rid of them, okay? Well, so at this point, uh, we have finished, but it would be good also uh, to close the reader once we have re uh, read it completely, okay? So we can call to reader.close. And same as before, uh, this is marked with a warning because uh, it recommends us to enclose everything by a try and catch. Because, yeah, the, okay, sorry. Not the reader, the close operation. Okay. Yeah, you know what? Why it's not being completed? Yeah, that's it. Okay. Yeah, because I, as I was saying, the the close operation is. I mean, eventually might throw an exception as well, okay? 
well, so at this point, I don't know if I've forgotten something. Well, maybe it would be good to to make sure that we are reading the contents of that file properly by uh, writing the contents of the input variable on the lock. Okay, so I'm gonna do that. For that, uh, yeah, I need to do the necessary imports here. And the lock, the lock function. Uh, receives two strings. One one of them is attack, and the other one is what we want to write. In this case, is the that's the contents of the input the input variable, and the attack is a way to um, yeah differentiate in the lock uh, this specific talk this specific uh, message from others. Okay. Well, we are gonna declare more uh, in a more global scope the uh, the string tag as, for example, uh, Sudoku assets. Okay, so that it will be easier for us to find where uh, these specific mes messages. Okay. Well, uh, we are ready to go. Let's let's see if this works. It takes a while to compile. Well, the output. Uh, or the screen is showing the same, so apparently it is working. And now if we have a look at the lock, uh, we find this line here, which is what we wrote, and it seems to, to have read the file properly, and the white spaces, uh, the extra white spaces have been added properly so that Everything works as expected, okay? So, and well, if we do a fast try, it seems that it is working same as before, okay? Well, so I'm gonna leave here my uh, programming. I will stop, but I want to propose you some changes in order to practice a little bit with this. And for example, a first in, a first interesting change would be uh, here instead of having just one Sudoku, it would be nice to to have more than one. Okay, for example, uh, split by a blank line, split by blank lines here. Uh, of course, this is the same. This is exactly the same Sudoku. Uh, yeah, what I propose you is to look for different ones through the internet and paste them in here. Okay. And to adapt the Java program in order to, to read them all. Okay. To, I mean, to conduct the, the reading of all the Sudokus in, in this file. And for example, for example, you could adapt the rest of the program uh, appropriately in order to to play to one of them chosen randomly. That's uh, an option. But as a further change, you could add some buttons, as many buttons as different Sudokus we have, so that uh, the the sudoku is reset i mean when we press one of the, those buttons the sudoku is reset to the corresponding sudoku okay or what we display here uh, the cells are reset uh, accordingly to the corresponding sudoku to the uh, button we have pressed okay that could be uh, an interesting change 
And as an extra change, instead of having many Sudokus in the fail in the same file, you could add new files and keep every Sudoku in a different file and add extra inst instructions here in order to get the list of files kept in the assets in the assets folder. How to do that? Well, I propose you to, to do a search to the internet in order to see how can I list the set or how can I get the list of files kept in the assets folder, okay? So those are my proposals in order to practice a little bit more with this. Well, so I'm gonna leave it here. I hope you made the most of it. And well, see you soon in the uh, next video of this series, okay? Goodbye.